everyone. My name is Shakib Rahman, and I'm an architect on the Oracle Apex product development team. Uh, for those that may not be familiar with Apex, Apex is a low-code application development platform uh, that enables developers to build scalable, secure web and mobile applications dramatically, orders of magnitude faster than traditional coding, uh, and without having to become experts in vast web technologies. So today, I'm thrilled to share with you some advancements we've been making in Apex to really leverage the power of generative AI and make developer productivity so much more. So first, I'm going to show you a demo of Quick SQL, uh, which is a shorthand syntax, a shorthand language we're introducing, uh, which dramatically in, uh, makes it easier to build uh, your SQL schemas. Then I'm going to go and demo uh, the Apex Assistant and how you can really use it to supercharge your development. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm in my Apex development environment here, and the first thing I want to do is go into Quick SQL. So if this is a live demo, I'll go into Quick SQL here, just go into the search, hit enter. All right. So what you're presented with is two panels here, and really it's, uh, let, let's say we're building a new application, and we need to store some new data. Well, the first thing you're going to do is need to have a place to store that information. So I'm going to give you a simple example here of the departments and employees, all right? So let's just start typing in departments. Departments have a name. They have probably a function. And as I start typing a slash, we'll sort of see this autocomplete list here. I'll type in check. Let's say, you know, there's IT, there's sales, accounting, finance. Uh, there's also employees within departments. And employees have a name. You know, I'm going to make that name a not null constraint. There's also, you know, email. Let's go ahead and lower that. Uh, you know, there might be other things like, you know, location, cost center, which might be a number. So I'll just type in num. Uh, and maybe there's also uh, the date hired, right, when, it, when the employee was hired. As I started typing this in, uh, I'll just zoom in a bit, you'll sort of see that the right side generates that SQL for you, right? So this is Apex uh, and the, leveraging this uh, quick SQL parser to generate full-on SQL. Uh, and what you see here is not only the appropriate create table statements and create indexes, also the triggers, uh, but I can go and actually view the entity relationship diagram as well. So this looks pretty simple right now. Let's go and add some settings here. So go into settings. I'm going to add a prefix to my tables. I'm also going to check the include audit columns button and the row number, uh, row version number, so I know when the data has been changed. I can also toggle the quick SQL API button, and that's going to enable me to have interface to easily kind of manipulate that information. Let's go ahead and save changes. And now on the right side, what's happening here is I've generated about, I don't know, 300 lines of SQL with all the PL SQL APIs, all the procedures, everything really I need to interface with this information. Uh, and of course, I can also see the diagram. Now, I'm going to cheat a bit just to kind of show you that this isn't just for simple uh, you know, uh, models here. Here's a fairly complex model, really an evolution of this. And you can sort of see the, the diagram come to life here and also the SQL. So this is about 47 lines of SQL, uh, 47 lines of quick SQL shorthand, uh, and it's generated about 1,200 lines of full-on elegant SQL. This is already available today in Apex, and very soon we hope to bring it to our other tools, such as SQL Developer Web, as well as make it open source. So that's quick SQL. Uh, but really what I want to show you next is how you can use the Apex Assistant to really supercharge your development. So let's go into Application Builder, uh, and I have this application here that's built on the sample HR data set. And what I want to do is I want to build a dashboard on the employees. So let's click on Create Page, and you're presented with a screen that asks you to describe the page you'd like to create. Uh, and there's some sample prompts here, but really we're leveraging natural language uh, prompts to generate the application metadata. So in this case, what I want to do is I really just want to chart employees by department. So I'm just going to copy the sample prompt here, uh, and I'll click on Next. And what Apex will do is it'll leverage its, its generative AI capabilities uh, within the platform and come up with the SQL below. It'll also suggest a title uh, for, my, for, for this uh, chart that I'm creating, for this region, uh, for this page. So, Shakib, I, as a developer, I can come in and edit it in case it developed you know, something that, that wasn't right. quite correct. <laughs> so, in, in this case, it seems to be right, but I can click on this button to validate the SQL. But you're right, in case the AI doesn't quite get it right, if you wanted to add other constraints, you can modify this, do whatever you like. So let's go ahead and create the page. And what Apex will do is, given my prompt of chart of employees by departments, it's understood that prompt, and it's created an application, it's created a page in my application with a chart of employees by departments. So I'm going to go and run the page just to sort of show you what's happening. And here's my chart, right? Uh, and so let's go back to the Apex development environment here. So what, what's actually happened here behind the scenes, right? So 
Apex captured the intent of the desired outcome. It captured that you wanted to build a chart on employees and group them by departments. The result was that it's application metadata, metadata. It's abstracted from the physical implementation. There's no lines of code that are generated to assemble this Apex region component. Instead, what's happening is the Apex building blocks are assembled to then create this chart and page. So what that means is, let's say I wanted to modify this, right? I'm not going to sift through hundreds and hundreds of lines of AI-generated code. Instead, I can actually use a declarative and you know, uh, visual UI of Apex to manipulate this page. So for example, I have this chart here. Let me add another one for average uh, you know, uh, salaries by job role. So I'm just going to go ahead, right click, duplicate this chart. And I've got it here. I'm just going to drag it to the side. Let's go rename this to average salary by job. Okay. And here, under my chart series, I have this SQL here. Right? And this is the same SQL. I just copy the region. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use this little button here called Apex Assistant. So let's go ahead and type in, you know, show me average salaries by job. Okay. Looks good. Let's click on this button. It's going to call out to AI. And now I have got this resulting SQL here. And it also uh, aliases the appropriate columns for me. It does all the right you know, a group by syntax. Looks good to me. I'm going to go and run the page. And here we go. So within a matter of moments, I was able to create this page in my application. I was able to provide some natural language prompts and manipulate the application, extend it even more, really by just providing another intent. And Apex did the rest of it. Great, Shakib. That's really exciting. Yeah, thank you very much, Andy. Mm -hmm.